Hello there, hi, welcome back to Wu Can Cook. My name is Wesley, and this is a show where we are slowly cooking our way through all of the food from my childhood. Today, we're getting back into our series on Chinese American food and checking out the Mushu pork from PF Chang's. I think their version of Mushu pork is a solid representation of an Americanized version of Mushu pork, so it should be interesting to dissect the elements and flavors that go into their recipe and take a look at what makes the Americanized version of Mushu pork so American. As always, I also went ahead and took a shot at my own version of a more authentic mushu pork, which is based off of how my mom used to make this stuff when I was a kid. As it turns out, what we were eating was actually not mushu pork at all, but a dish called he zai dai mao, which is loosely translated to mixed veggies with an egg hat. This dish differs in a number of ways, mainly in its use of vermicelli rice noodles, but also in the way that it's served, which is with an egg pancake on top rather than in a bowl as a stir fry. Okay, so starting off with our P.F. Cheng's version, you'll notice that a mushu pork is essentially a giant veggie stir fry, so most of our prep is just cutting up a bunch of veggies. I'm crushing and mincing four cloves of garlic here, followed by a fine mince on about two tablespoons of ginger. Next are some green onions, which I'm separating by their whites and greens. We're going for a larger chop on our whites for a bit of bite, followed by a finer bias cut on our greens, which we're gonna set aside for our garnish. Then we're moving on to some dry wood ear mushrooms. Now these are a bit tough to find and what I'm actually using here are black fungus, which are similar. If you can't find either of these, you can also go ahead and either just use plain old shiitake mushrooms or leave them out entirely. We're rehydrating these for five minutes, then slicing these into strips. Next up, I'm doing a julienne cut on some carrots, followed by some cucumbers. Then I'm slicing up some white cabbage here because I think it's what you'll most commonly find in America, so it will be appropriate for our P.F. Chang's version. And we're moving on to our pork. For our pork, I'm going with a boneless pork loin here. Don't bother with a bone-in pork chop for something like this, because we're just going to chop this stuff up into strips anyway, so you'll want to save those bone-in chops for your pan sears. I'm marinating this in a pretty simple marinade of 4 tablespoons of soy sauce, 2 tablespoons of Shaoxing wine, 1 tablespoon of sesame oil, and then setting this aside for 30 minutes or up to an hour. Next up, I'm whisking up two eggs with a bit of Shaoxing wine and a pinch of cornstarch. You'll find that the Shaoxing wine is pretty familiar to most of the wok fried eggs that you've ever had, and the cornstarch is going to prevent the aggressive wok heat from developing a rubbery and overcooked egg. For our sauce, I'm using four tablespoons of soy sauce, followed by two tablespoons of oyster sauce for some fishy umami, one tablespoon of doubanjiang for some heat, one tablespoon of Shaoxing wine for some sweetness, and a pinch of kosher salt. Moving over to the stove, I'm adding 4 tablespoons of vegetable oil to a ripping hot wok and as always, long yao. Some folks have asked me how to make sure that your wok is hot enough. If you're not sure, stick a wooden utensil in the oil. As long as you see bubbles forming around the wooden utensil, like this, you've got enough heat. Now, we're definitely going to need to exercise some batch cooking here since there are so many ingredients to stir fry. I'm starting off with my pork, then pulling it out at about 90% doneness so we can let it finish up in our final stir fry. Then I'm rinsing out my wok, long yao one more time, and we're moving on to our veggies. I'm starting with my aromatic elements of garlic, ginger, and the whites of my green onions. We're tossing this for about 15 seconds until fragrant, then adding our cabbage and carrots. I'm giving this a toss with a couple tablespoons of our sauce mixture, then adding my mushrooms followed by some bean sprouts and some canned bamboo shoots. We're tossing all of this with another three tablespoons of our sauce, then adding our pork back to the wok. Hold off on as much of this residual liquid as you can, because you're going to have quite a bit of moisture to contend with in the wok already. Finally, I'm adding my cucumbers and my sauce mixture very last, giving this all one more toss and removing everything from the wok. Last up, I'm wiping down my wok, giving one more final long yao, and adding my egg mixture to the wok. I'm rotating the wok to make sure we get as much of the egg in contact with the wok as possible, kind of like how you would with an omelette. Then we're saying a little prayer and giving our egg a flip. <sighs> nice. I'm laying this out on our cutting board, then cutting it into strips and finally tossing this in with my stir fry. I'm topping all of this with the greens of my green onions and we're ready to eat. Now for our P.F. Chang's version, I went with some mushu wrappers since that's definitely what they use, plus it's probably the more traditional, although less American move. These things are crazy thin though, so I've generally gotten in the habit of doubling up and using two at a time, otherwise they pretty much will tear if you even look at them wrong. We're topping all of this with a bit of hoisin sauce, folding it up, and it's time to eat. This version of mushu pork definitely sticks to a pretty tried and true American approach here. I know I did use a handful of veggies that are a little hard to find, but as with many veggie stir fries, I hope the general takeaway is that you can really throw whatever veggies you happen to have on hand into your mushu pork. 
Otherwise, I think you'll find that this recipe is packed with flavor, it's super hearty, and you can totally eat it right out of the bowl if you happen to run out of wrappers. No kidding though, I really wanna stress that these wrappers are stupid thin and I broke at least 10 of them before I started doubling them up. Okay, so moving on to our Wu Can Cook version, we're going with my mom's recipe here. As with a number of these recipes, after discussing this further with my parents, I discovered a whole web of lies about my childhood, because it turns out what we were eating is actually not mushu pork at all, but a dish called he zai dai mao. This loosely translates to veggies with a hat on it, which is why I always thought that mushu pork is served in a platter with an egg on top. We're also going to incorporate some vermicelli rice noodles and take a look at what fresh bamboo shoots look like, because they are crazy looking. I'm starting out pretty similar to our P.F. Chang's version, so we can just speed right through these bits. This is some crushed and minced garlic, some finely minced ginger, some julienned carrots, wood ear mushrooms, and some bean sprouts. Then I'm using green onions again, but this time I'm going to skip the garnish, so I'm just chopping these into large planks. For our cabbage, I'm going with Napa cabbage this time, which you'll find is the more common cabbage in Chinese food for its peppery flavor. I'm breaking out the big boy because these things are pretty large and I'll make any excuse I can to use my 16 inch butcher's knife. Next up, I'm using some fresh bamboo shoots this time. These things are definitely tricky to find, but if you happen to live near an Asian market, you'll find them in the produce section soaking in a tub of water. Their flavor is honestly very similar to the canned stuff, but I like that I can chop these things a bit larger since I thought the canned ones sort of disappeared in our P.F. Chang's version. For our eggs, I'm going with three eggs here this time because we're going to need to cover a little bit more surface area than our P.F. Chang's version. I forgot to film it somehow, but I'm adding a tablespoon of Shaoxing wine plus a pinch of cornstarch to our eggs again as well. Our pork loin is starting off pretty similar again by cutting them into thin strips, then marinating in soy sauce, Shaoxing wine, and a bit of sesame oil. This time though, I'm going to add a pinch of monosodium glutamate or MSG, which you'll find is the secret umami boost to a lot of Chinese food. You want to use this stuff really sparingly though, because it will get overpowering very quickly. I'm sticking pretty close to our P.F. Chang's version for our sauce, because I actually thought we nailed it the first time. This is 4 tablespoons of soy sauce, 2 tablespoons of oyster sauce, 1 tablespoon of doubanjang, and a tablespoon of Shaoxing wine. Moving on to our vermicelli, go ahead and ignore this egg pancake spoiler here. I'm blanching these very quickly for about 2 minutes in hot water, then immediately straining and shocking in cold water. Now these things are extremely delicate, so if you really want to be gentle, you can even rehydrate them in room temperature water for about 10 minutes too. Over on the stove, I'm adding some vegetable oil to a ripping hot wok, and as always, long yao for your non-stick surface. Now this time, I'm going to treat my aromatics a bit differently to benefit the depth of flavor with our pork here. I'm throwing in my garlic and ginger first for about 15 seconds until fragrant, then adding my pork. We're flash frying this for 1-2 to two minutes until about 90% done, then removing, wiping down the wok, long yao one more time, and moving on to our veggies. I'm starting with our super hearty veggies first, since I think they'll benefit from the high heat of the wok the most. This is our cabbage and our carrots going in first. Then I'm adding my bamboo shoots and mushrooms, tossing it with a couple tablespoons of our sauce to build some depth of flavor, followed by everything else. Once everything's in the wok, you'll notice that you're going to start losing heat from your wok pretty quickly. This is okay since our remaining ingredients pretty much just need to be tossed and combined, so we really don't need to be doing too much cooking at this point anyway. If at any point you notice that your wok is losing heat and you are still cooking though, this means that you need to employ more batch cooking technique and you probably have overloaded your wok. I'm pulling everything off heat once everything is combined, ignore these eggs one more time. Then I'm wiping down the wok, long yao one more time, and now we're finally ready to do our eggs. This time, instead of slicing them up, we're going to put it right on top of our stir fry for the maozi of our hezai dai mao. I'm plating this up on a flour tortilla this time because this is how I always used to eat this stuff. Then I'm finishing it with some hoisin sauce and we're ready to eat. This version of mushu pork is pretty unique for me, mainly because I've honestly never come across it, at least here in California, outside of the dinner table with my parents. The addition of vermicelli also adds a nice hearty quality that reminds me a lot of a Filipino punset, plus the larger chop of our bamboo shoots makes a huge difference as well since I could actually find them this time. Maybe more importantly though, the plating of this version with our egg hat plus the flour tortilla is very nostalgic for me and just reminds me a lot of fighting over the last bit of egg with my brother over dinner. Okay, so that's it everyone. Thanks so much for sticking around and watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I know I had a lot of fun dissecting a Chinese and American classic here. For those new to the channel, we recently found our 1000th subscriber, which means that there's a neat new tab on the channel called the community tab. I'll be using this area of the channel to throw out updates on recipes that I'm workshopping, new requests that folks are waiting for, and other just general updates too. 
It'll also be a useful space if you're looking for what I'll be cooking on live stream next, which is every Tuesday and Thursday at 6.30 p.m. PST and Wednesdays at 6 p.m. PST. As always, like, comment, subscribe, and just do some internet stuff. All right, see you soon.